Welcome to Elle's Kitchen. Oh, how'd you like that move? Woo! A little stuffed up there, huh? So welcome. I'm so glad you could come. I think it's really fun because we have all of the people that have been coming for many years. Let me see those people. The regulars. The regulars. Yeah, the regulars. And all the new people. Where's all the new people? Yay! Oh, thank you. Welcome. So this is going to be really fun because I'm going to cook for you. But I'm going to quilt for you, too. So how many of you know how to quilt? <laughs> That's good, that's good, that's good, really good. And it's all about food, food. And see, we have to start out, if we're going to talk about this, we have to have the food pyramid, right? Absolutely. The food pyramid. We want to keep slender. Ah, so there it is, the healthy eating pyramid. This is good. And because of the food pyramid, Ron, my husband and I, we became inspired. Okay. Yes, and Brenda. I'm apologizing in advance. Yes. Because we just went kind of loony. <laughs> That's not unusual for you, <laughs> sweetie. Oh, actually, I would prefer it if you opened it. I okay. I have you open it. Okay. okay. You open it. Okay. And, and oh, my gosh. <laughs> Does it all one size fits? Oh, I can't believe it. Thank you. You're very welcome. Now, how long did this take you, Brenda? Oh, you don't want to know. Okay, now, it fits on like this. Okay. And there's a little string that over, over there you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, does the hat cast a shadow on my face? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. I don't want I don't want my wrinkles to show. That's better. Is that better? Yes. What am I supposed to do? I said it goes with your wrinkles. Yeah. Oh, it does. It does. With the little yo-yos. And it is a food pyramid. It is. Okay. Okay. If you notice here, okay. Start down here at the bottom with your breads and your whole grains and your food. Vegetables. Do I have to and turn around? No, I think you can see it. But on the you top, can see it all? <laughs> you can see it all. And then you have, of course, at the top, you have your meat and your sugars and your dairies. Very and important. Very important with your pasta. Very important. Your the egg. Where's the chocolate? <laughs> Where's the chocolate? That's all we care about, we huh? The chocolate. Then you're putting a giant Hershey's kiss on the top, but it made it top heavy. Oh, that was very good. That was very good. That was very good. That was, okay, that's cool. Lady um, Gaga, beware. But this is real. She makes it all up. We're real. We're genuine. Hmm? Thank you. Ben, did you recognize me? Ben, you're going to have to go or you're going to be in trouble. <laughs> Now, how will you ever respect me wearing a hat like this? <laughs> Is it okay? Yes. Okay. Yes. So you have your you have your hand out, right? Right. Oh, and I didn't get all the yardage written, but I thought it'd be better if I just gave you yardage I was sure of today. Is that good? Yes. Good. Well. Doesn't quilts from the kitchen sound like it's the 30s? Yeah. Yeah. I know. It's from the 30s. And we have this lovely assortment from our kitchen just for you. Is that cute? It's very cute. Very clever idea. And see if I can only get it open now. Ah! Fat quarters. Fat quarters. And so if you want to just go ahead and get like two and a half yards of background, we're sure you're going to have enough. And how about a bunch of fat quarters in like two multicolored? How about one red, one red, two pink, three yellow, three blue, two purple, and three green? Is that okay? That's a good start. That's a good start. And 
Wouldn't it? Oh, Claudette, thank you for coming. She's just new, but she already knows. She said it would be easier to just buy the package. And where might you get that, Claudette? Yes! <laughs> You're welcome back anytime. <laughs> It's a deli pack. Yeah, it's a deli pack. So then there's you modern ones, right? You go, oh, I don't like 30s. I can't imagine not liking 30s. But Teresa likes batiks. Ooh, aren't those pretty? That's very pretty. I know I like that. Or we have this really cool um, layer cake just called Butterscotch and Roses. It's entirely different. It has large scale prints, soft, uh, soft prints, little ones. It's just a great variety if you're gonna make a six inch block. So you have lots of options, right? <gasps> and you have scraps. Yay. 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 That's what I like to get into. I've gotten into all of my scraps, and I'm having so much fun. Well, I didn't give you a picture of what the quilt looks like because I'm still working on it, but I'm pretty close to exactly what it's going to be. And now the close-up camera goes right here. Yay! Nice. So we have a large center square. We're going to do, this is cherry basket. Cool. And now we're going to we're going to fill it out. The colors aren't all quite right yet, but we are working on it. Surrounded by applique, the A word, but it's the easy kind. Applique and then these are all blocks around it divided by lattice and cornerstones. And I took it from an antique setting. It's just really fun. I I like the antique setting. We're working on the color, but as time goes on, you'll know all about it. You just got to trust me, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, you got to trust me. It works for you. Cool, so I'm just going to pull these off and I get to show you. What was that? Um, oh, the apron is there. Pork and beans. Oh my gosh, I wonder if Mary took it out. Gosh, that's why I'm not giving you this. <laughs> it's a work, it's a moving target. It's a mystery quilt. No, it's, it's, I don't know why I took it out, but I'm going to show you. Okay, so if you go inside, turn in your um, first page of, in, page of instructions, and... There's this really cute little story about Grandma's apron, which we're all going to do in just a minute. But you see um, my mother's apron? That is the name of the pattern, my mother's apron. And it was actually published in the Kansas City Star. Yeah, yeah probably in the 1930s and the 1940s. But this is the one that I did. I love it. And actually right there, it's just the pocket and I said, put a little handkerchief in it. And I got into my package of handkerchiefs last night. And honestly, it even says on it, each hanky has a hole in it or a stain. But I still couldn't figure out which one to cut up. And the whole package was only a dollar. But look, this is what I decided. Don't you think that would look adorable tucked in there? Yeah, maybe I don't have to. Maybe I don't have to. Let's see. Let's see if I just stick it in there. He doesn't like his ears cut. Yeah, poor. Pent Benjamin doesn't like his. Okay, how's that? Is that cute? Is that very cute? Oh, It's very cute. And so. And it looks just like, yeah, and, it, and this one, it was just really fun. I used all of the um, pieces from my, um, from my scraps, but this one, 
this is the one that I went nuts for. These are real. These are genuine feed sacks that I cut up. Look at that. Isn't that cute? And this is going to be my little apron, uh, my little pocket. But look at all of the prints. And the background is actually one of my mother's aprons, or one of my mother's feed sacks. My mother was the queen of making faded, dirty feed sacks look beautiful and white. I don't know, she cooked them on the stove, but anyhow, look at the texture. That's a genuine um, feed sack. And these are all right from the 1930s. Cute? Very cute. Very cute. And this one is the little um, six inch apron. Aww. That's the six inch. And this one I actually made out of the um, butterscotch and roses. The little, but it's cute, isn't it? And I put little Rick Rack in. And now for Teresa's. Teresa, the boutique lady. Okay, don't look, don't look. It's coming, it's coming. Are you ready? Ta da! Very pretty. Is that pretty? So the one thing that you have to be aware of is that the Rick Rack trim, Teresa had white and so she used this soft green so that there would be contrast on it so she could see it. Since I wanted to use the white on mine, this one I used little green Rick Rack. And obviously, of course, over in this one I used the red on the yellow. So think about what color of your background and your Rick Rack is going to be. Good? Ah, I loved all of them. It was so much fun. And this is the best part. It's very easy to do. Yay! Yay, yippee! Um, let me think. Um, right now, it's around 70 inches square in the 12-inch block. You can do the six inch again. You can do six inch. Okay, six times, let's see. Six times six, around 36 inches square. So there's two sizes, the 12 inch and the six inch. And you can do either one or the other. So right now, they're fairly small, but um, you can plan what you want. Okay, so if you look at the instructions, um, the wedges, the wedges are just easy rectangles, and I honestly just layered them up really fast. You can do a two and three eighths by uh, 10 inch for the 12 inch block, and just one and three eighths by five inch for the six inch block. And it looks like Teresa already cut me my evening pieces. How's that? So let's just get rid of half of these. So how many do you need? Six. And then you need to have one more for the waistband. waistband. So that's actually a total of seven. seven. Okay, and I hope my waistband is, is set aside. I'm really into layer cutting. My blades are sharp. Oh, we have this really cool sharpener that I really recommend. This new sharpener is so cool. It's inside my little basket, wrapped up. wrapped up. Well, this actually comes with a pair of tweezers, but she didn't put my little tweezers there, did she? Um, the what package is, is on the floor. The Are package is on the floor. This is scary to me. <laughs> Give me the tweezers. I don't know about you, but I use my blades clear up to the very end, and I would just demonstrate this fair. She tried to do this really nice for me, but it's impossible to get in there. I all I want to do is get the tape off of all of this. Whoa! I think there should be a band-aid in that pocket. Yeah, don't bleed. Oh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even think of it. I might pass out. There you go. <laughs> That was very nice and considerate of her, but anyhow. Okay, this is the really cool thing. 
that this little sharpener, you don't have to be a genius woodworker to work it. It's all stuck together. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm nearly done. It's gonna be okay. Just to pick it up. I'm like afraid to touch it. Okay, okay, okay. So right, look at this. Go right on there because this is the really cool thing on, be because it does three sizes. Oh, that's good. Thank you, Orion. It does three sizes of blades. See? It does one. This is the medium one and it does the large one. And look, you just put it right in there like that. And then you just, and then you just push it. Down. And I think you count 60 seconds, but it's, we won't do it for 60. But then you pick it up and you turn it around and you do it on the other side. It is really, it's, uh, it's the first one that I've really been impressed with. Okay. Sixty seconds. See, you don't have to know how to do it. You just push the button and the unlock, and then, and then I think the directions say you turn it over and do it sixty seconds again and again. Now, if you put this huge nick in it, if you go over this really huge pin or something like that. It won't work, but it's really good for sharpening it's your blades. It's made by Grace Frame. The same yeah. people that make the other true cut, and this one's called the true sharp. The and true sharp. Right here. Oh, Thank you. Is this good for any, any kind of um, uh, blade? Uh huh. And did you see it has those same si all the different sizes? That's what's nice. It has. <laughs> it would. It's really worth it. And see, I, I when I work with a class. And I work with a whole lot of people, then it really is helpful for me. It saves me a lot of money. Okay, so now I stacked all my six pieces up, and now we're going to turn the page. Making the apron wedges, isn't that a cute page? So it says to just put little marks a half inch in. This is for the 12 inch block. So I marked a half inch in from both sides. Okay. Did I say half inch? Half inch. Oh, good. And then you just angle. You put your ruler at that mark and down to the opposite corner. Okay. I have them all stacked up and I'm just going to cut. Okay. And I know this is the moment that this all the newbies are waiting for. Is <laughs> 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 on my hat now? It's okay. It fits right in. It fits right in. Oh, good. I knew, I knew that it would. I knew that it would. Sexy and, food. Sexy? Is that what you said? Sexy food. Oh. <laughs> no, it's exercise. It's trying to keep the middle. A middle. <laughs> so, I just see how I, I notched it, and now we have these cute little wedges. Are they cute? Yes. And was that easy? Huh? And so now I'm just going to lay them out. I love a check. Don't you just love a check? And the pink and green. It would think that we arranged these ahead of time, but we didn't really. How's it looking from where you're sitting? Good. Let me see. On this side? Yeah. Put right here. Right there. That looks good. That looks really good. Okay, I'm excited. So then all you have to do is just take them, flip them into pairs. I've got six right here. Flip them into pairs. Just sew them together and then sew the remaining ones together. Okay? So I'm just going to start that. You use a quarter inch seam. Don't use a scant quarter, and the reason is it won't fit on your background if you use a scant quarter. So just use um, regular quarter inch. Oops, I turned it off. When was I thinking? 
<laughs> okay, now I'm ready. So I'm just going to start sewing right down and then I'm going to put all six together and um, press the seams open. And while I am doing that, needle down, okay, pedal! Ooh, how about moving my gear? It seems like a child must have been using it. And also, get out your trusty stiletto. So now we have all of these aprons passed out, huh? All of these aprons. And so we're all a little bit older, but we all know why Grandma had aprons, right? Because she didn't have many dresses. She didn't have many dresses, and it was so much easier to make an apron, right? Make an apron, just, and then every time she just covered up her beautiful dress with her apron. And look at all the cute patterns that I have. I love all my patterns right there and this one on the top is my favorite one i can't wait i want to show this to my granddaughters is that cute isn't that cute it's so cute and then this is the this is like the great cover-up one the really fancy one so much fun well we have some people with aprons and i know you can't wait to put your aprons on yeah. Especially the couple in the front. That would be now. Okay. Now you are going to put your aprons on. And did you practice your lines? And as you get your aprons all on, come up here in the front, right along the front. Oh, my God. Okay, let's have the couple first. Okay, everybody sit down, and the couple will go right over here in front of Sherry and stand. <laughs> oh, Brenda, you look lovely in it. Oh, my gosh. I'm okay, I think. Yeah, you look good. You look good. Okay, come over here. Come over here. Okay, Eleanor. Whoa. Look at the couple. Wow! I go. There's something in your pocket that you might need. <laughs> you have to figure out where the pocket is. <laughs> Did you find it? <laughs> And that is a, that's a bottle opener. <laughs> it's a bottle opener. Speak <laughs> Norma. When unexpected company drove up the road, it was surprising how much furniture that old apron could dust in a matter of seconds. <laughs> Kind of when, company the came, oh, <laughs> when company came, those April were ideal hiding place for shy kids. Good. Good. <laughs> You're real shy. <laughs> okay, so you okay. can sit down. You can sit okay. down. Let me read this. Uh -huh, I'm real loud. Here's my mic. The, Someplace. Oh. Those big old aprons wiped many perspiring brow, bent over the hot wood stove. Chips and kindling wood were brought into the kitchen in that apron. That's right cool. There. I love the Rick Rack. Yeah. All right. Now, I love this one. This is the kind my mom wore. And when the weather was cold, Grandma would wrap herself in her apron. Aww. <laughs> That's very cute. Okay, you can sit down. Thank you. Oh, look at Marie. Look how cute the pockets are. And this is like hand embroidery work. They're really cute. They're fake pockets, kind of. They're, they're egg pockets? No, fake. Fake. I oh, mean, they're fake. Nothing. They're fake. Yeah. That's very cute. Okay. Oh, Did you get... No, I don't have anything to read. They're fake pockets. Yes. Nothing to read. That's very good. <laughs> all right. This one actually is a more... This was made just recently with all the bias tape. So cute. Isn't that cute? cute? This is Sharon. 
from the chicken coop, the apron was used for carrying eggs, fussy chicks, and sometimes half-hatched eggs to be kept in the warming oven. That's true. Very nice. Cool. And Victoria's, I love the little crochet. Is that cute? Ooh, do your thing. No, nothing to read, right? I don't have anything to read. I've been crocheting all night. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. And Eloise, this is, um, this is an interesting waistband, isn't it? Kind of like points to the spot. Flash card. Oh, is that what it is? It's a splash card. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Or leaning over the sink. Yeah. And aprons were very good for drying children's tears Aww. and sometimes cleaning out their ears. <laughs> Great job. And chocolate and aprons. That's cool. From the garden, it carried all sorts of vegetables. After the peas had been shelled, it carried out the holes. <laughs> That's cool. I like that. And that pocket is adorable on that one. Look how cute you look. Oh, don't from you Julian. <laughs> She's from Julian. <laughs> in the autumn, the apron was used to bring in apples that had fallen from the tree. Wow. How perfect did you get that? Well, how did that work? I think you gave it to me. <laughs> I know, but I know. <laughs> So put your put your little thing in your apron pocket. There you go. Cool, thank you. Hello, Margaret. Mine's waving because when dinner was ready, Grandma would go out in the porch, and the men knew dinner's ready. <laughs> thank you, Margaret. That was adorable. Okay, Chris. I know the fancy one. Like yes. The organza one. Yes. And the reason I I, I have this one is because I'm only a hostess because I quilt better than I cook. Oh, good. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Okay, I have to come beside okay. you, Becky. Martin Luther, we all know who Martin Luther was, yes. was married to Katie Luther. They had six or seven children. They lived in a one-room house. Uh -huh. When Katie Luther wanted some private time the on to say her prayers, the only way she could get it was to take her apron that she always wore and put it up over her head to give herself some privacy. And she would stand there like this to say her daily prayers. That is great. Isn't that great? Don't you think we should adopt it and do we it now? Should, yeah. <laughs> I think that's the answer to our sanity. <laughs> that, is, that is a really cute one. I like that. Uh -huh. Oh, that's great. That is great. All right. I, I don't, my mom went to a one-room schoolhouse, but I don't remember her talking about that. That is really, oh my gosh. Okay, I, I like to press my seams open right now. That's what I'm struggling with up here, pressing my seams open, because it seems that it's um, less bulk whenever you put your rickrack around the outside edge. And you're going to see what a cute little shape it gets. And see, I think that a lot of women, I didn't really use a pattern to get the wedges. Oh, look, we're doing so good. Just like cut it out of paper. Is that cute? That's cute. It's, it's, it would. You could make it for your children's dolls, for your grand, grandchildren's dolls. Okay, so I want to cut it straight across the top. And I realize if I put my center line on um, the cutting mat line, <coughs> then I can just go ahead and lay my ruler. Because sometimes we say, cut it straight. Ta-da! Okay, right across the top. That's good. And then you can just take and fold it right sides together. And all we're going to do is just curve this little corner because we don't want to go around a square corner with our rickrack. Good? Get rid of that. Was that easy enough? Yes. Very easy. And so now, I love it. I'm going to use the green because Teresa cut me. Um, yes. Oh, it's. Mm. They're telling me I have lipstick on my teeth, and I thought I removed it earlier. Joan, that was your job. I went like that. <laughs> oh, 
Oh my gosh. So for this, for applying the rickrack, your rickrack is one inch wide. And I did say to use an open toe foot, but then I found out I think that I like my um, quarter inch foot just as well. But it would be really good if you put your foot down before you start, right? Okay, let's see if I can get started all over again. Needle down. So all I want to do is just line up the raw at the edge of the rickrack with the raw edge of the apron. I'm going right down through the middle. Uh-huh. What do you think? Oh, did I say that? I said that just to make sure you were paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> it's really a half inch, right? It's really a half inch. But you know, I, I can't imagine if you did like on the six inch, if you um, did that little, what is it, one fourth inch wide? Can you imagine that? And maybe the jumbo would just um, be too big. What do you think? So how many of you have stacks and stacks of rickrack? I have some rickrack. You have some rickrack? Honestly, I met some girls recently that said, what is rickrack? <laughs> I don't know. They what plan? Oh, is that it? And why is it called that? Does somebody know the answer? I, I don't really know. Rickrack. It's kind of like... Oh, where's all the girls with the iPhones? Okay, go for it. I can tell you that it's spelled in different websites. That it's what? Some call it like the Rick's has in the name, R-I-C-K. Some is R-I-C-K. R-I-C. 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 What is the origin of the word? Were you close? Did you get that? Cool. That's good. Isn't that nice? And so all you do now is just turn it around, turn under your raw edge. I love doing raw edges this way. So just turn it under, and that like finishes it all off. Okay. Kevin, I wanted to see how you curved the corners. Yes, I just went around it. Okay, I, you did, okay it shows it that it's cut here. Did I miss that? Yeah. It's on underneath number seven. I just trimmed it off and I didn't measure anything. I eyeballed it. She folded it in half so the two were equal and then she just cut it. Cut it off. Okay. Yeah. And she just did it freehand, right? Uh, yeah. But you could use a glass if you were worried about it. Oh, yeah, but it's not worth it to go that crazy. <laughs> So now you've got you've got your back your um your background and remember your block is going to be twelve and a half inches wide. So just put it out like this. Okay, I'm gonna be very specific and tell you how to do this, okay? If you fold it in half and just do a little crease with this, and then just take the center seam on the apron and line up the center seam on the apron. There. Is that cute? Yeah. cute? See? Orion, eat your heart out. He told me it was ugly. <laughs> it's pretty, I really, and then you go back and you stitch in the ditch. I'm gonna look at my time so we can get to our cooking. You stitch in the ditch around here and then your little top to your apron, your um, waistband mm -hmm. is 12 and a half inches, so you just put it right sides together and just stitch it right across there. How's that? Is that adorable? Thank you. I had so much fun doing it. I honestly did. And then once you get um, your waistband on, then go ahead and square it up to 12 and a half inches. Orion oh, um, said, what about the pocket? The patterns are there. 
and they're just very simple. And you just put the little rickrack. I had my, let me go back to this one. Okay, so you just put your rickrack around the curved outside edge, like so. It's so cute. You just go like this, right around the end, turn the rickrack under, just like I did. And then I folded this edge back and stitched here and turned it right side out. And then I just top stitched that down too. I just edged it. Huh? You flip it under? You you have to flip. You have to do it. You have to do it this way first. And then you um, turn it right side out. And then it's all done. And it's adorable with a little handkerchief. If you can bear to cut your handkerchief. <laughs> It's too cute. All right, I'm going to move all this aside because we have pork and beans. Yeah. The block that is not in the quilt anymore. <laughs> and now we're going to do pork, pork and, and beans. beans. Yeah. Are you hungry? Yeah. Oh, look, it's a rock. The pork and beans have arrived. Are they hot? Oh, oh. <coughs> they are made. Okay, pork and beans. If when you look at that beautiful picture, this this is what happened to me. I was sitting and listening to a news program, and it was just the sign of the times. I mean, the depression. Yes, things were tough. And again, things are very tough for families. And they were talking about the middle America family that actually needs to go to a food bank to get their ingredients for their food, and that's what they're using to feed their families on now. And I'm going, darn it, you know what? <coughs> you can get beans, you can get beans for $1.49 a pound. And this was just like four cups. Ooh, look at this. You thought I couldn't cook. Look at that. Ooh. This was like $2 worth of beans. Two and bucks? Two bucks. And all I did last night was I put, look at you. Look how cute this is. So while we talk about it, you can have a little taste of it. Oh, thank you, Cindy. Does it smell good? Okay, so I'll do all the talking about it. So all I did last night was cover it with water. I threw in a couple of garlic for good measure, and I let it set all night. And then this morning I dumped off that water and covered it again, and I actually simmered it for an hour and a half. It's good? Oh, good. Now the other row is not going to, you're not going to be able and actually what I used was great northern beans. You can use all different kinds of beans. You can use pinto beans or whatever, but this was the, it was the great northern bean that I started out with last night. At Sprouts. You just buy them by the bulk. And it's just, it's just really good. And um, Teresa had fun. I think these are so cute. They're black-eyed peas. Aren't they cute? So you can use these too, but trust me, it's really, really easy to do. So um, first I, I, I soaked the beans, drained them, simmered them for one and a half hours. But this, I learned something. If you pick up a bean, oh, I'm touching it. And if it comes out of the shell, see, if it comes out of the shell, they're ready to use. I'm not afraid. <laughs> and so it was just really, really inexpensive, just very inexpensive to do. Okay, so this is the recipe that I actually did for those beans. Are they warm? They're warm. So this is, uh, this is what I did. It was the dried white beans. Okay, now, now we're going to, I'm sorry that if we were a real kitchen, we'd have an overhead. 
and they could see me take a large white onion. I just chopped it up and I went and I put in a little garlic and cut it really small. Aren't you glad? Okay, so I'm just going to put this in. You're putting all the ingredients in, right? Okay, and now I am doing my Julia Child's impersonation. Okay, and so then I asked Teresa to add everything. This looks really disgusting. But in here, it's, it's all simple ingredients. Two tablespoons butter, two tablespoons oil, um, and leave off the water next, but then two tablespoons of mustard and three tablespoons of vinegar. And then this is what's supposed to make it really good, okay? This is the clincher. A fourth of a cup of maple syrup. Ooh, real maple syrup, real maple syrup. And I realize that some of your families, I mean, this is like 12 bucks. You can substitute brown sugar. This is like 75 cents in bulk at Sprouts. <laughs> so then, and also the molasses, and oh, oh, Ryan, you'll remember this because one of the ladies, this is Sand Mountain, molasses taste the best. One of our ladies in class gave us this. And so um, molasses, and that's what you taste in there. Isn't it good? And it says salt and uh, pepper to taste, but honestly, I, I used a ham bone from Christmas. Okay, so this is the next thing. You use your ham bone, and you've already served a meal. You already made another bowl, bowl of soup with it, but now you're using your ham bone. If you can't get a ham bone, you can substitute bacon. That works good. And they actually did it with um, real pork. And so you just stir it all together. I got to make sure that Teresa put all the ingredients in here. Teresa, did you actually put all the ingredients in here? But you followed the recipe? Okay. Okay. What was the thing? I just used Grey Poupon. She said she didn't have any, but we'll have to go out and get some. That, that has vinegar. I use just white vinegar. Is it good? Oh, I'm so happy. Oh, there's a typo. Yeah, you can put it in the oven, or you can put it in your crock pot. Okay, now it says 32 ounces chicken broth or water. And I think this is, it, I thought that 32 ounces was too much. But anyhow, maybe not. Maybe it's... Taste your oatmeal. Oh, thank you. You know what? I think that maybe not quite 32. How about, it's a lot. It's a lot of water. Okay, so Orion, what do you think? Yum. Yum. So now what, what I'm going to do with this, since we are here at Quilton today, I'm going to finish that, and we're going to just put this in the crock pot and slowly simmer it until tonight's class. And guess what? I forgot the most important ingredient. Mm. Ham. <laughs> ham. But um, this one that you are eating, I had the ham bone in there. It simmered the whole time. And then I just cleaned the ham bone. And I gave the leftovers to Benjamin. So she's, she's, that's why she's coming back for more. Okay. So that's all we have to do is we have to bake it. But... Let me tell you, you know how they say the recipe, this recipe will take you 10 minutes. That's all it is. It's not much time, and look how much food you get. You could feed the neighborhood on it. <laughs> so I'm going to show you all the different, um, different samples. First of all, this was the contemporary-looking one that I showed you. 
This is the six inch block, really simple, and you're not gonna believe this. This is the whole lesson. Everything locks together. Go, ooh. This, I work so hard on getting this right. You are gonna love this. It's really cool. It's simple, but you know how simple things don't always match? Ooh, go in real close, ooh. So this is the 12 inch one, and this is what Teresa did, and it's just made of all um, seven and a half inch squares. It's either four and a half or seven and a half. And this one, I just did in one color. I said, you know how Chris just likes it simple with just one color. Chris, you can do it simple with one color. And that's kind of light. It's, it's rather pale almost. And then this one I did six inch. I did two collars. I had to get the, the kind of red for the beans. And this is what I want to know. How do you make the beans red? They're supposed to take up the color of the molasses, but mine didn't. I thought maybe ketchup. But this is a six inch, but just in case. You can also do this for the 12 inch block, okay? You can make four oh, six inch blocks. Ah! Isn't that cute? That could be your 12 inch block. And that is written right at the end of your um, instructions, right on page 11. So if you want to go that way, you just cut out four six-inch blocks, make your six-inch, and then put it all together. All right? Isn't it cute? And, and it has a number of other um, names. I mean, you can call it um, pork and beans, but it also can simply be called bow ties, which makes a lot more sense. Bow ties, hourglass, or whirling blades. Okay? Wanna sell it? See, I fed you. Now we can have a little bit more time and do our lesson. Good idea. Okay, so I'm going to do um, the six inch block. They are two background squares at four and a half inches. And you need to have a medium and a dark. And I'm gonna do the, the little blue and the little red. Aren't they cute? And those are in our little lunch box. Whoops, not the apron. This. <laughs> I need a chef hat the next time, huh? Okay, so we're just gonna take the medium and the dark and place these squares right sides together. Oh gosh. Right sides together are not that easy to find. <laughs> She said, don't buy a chef hat. Ron's going to make me one. <laughs> That's too cool. OK, so turn the page. Beep. And I cannot say this enough. Follow your directions exactly. So they all lock together in the end. OK, so we're just going to draw one diagonal line down through the middle, <coughs> like so. So did we have anything left for my lunch, Teresa? How about what? Oh, good. So you're going to start those cooking for tonight. Cool. OK, so then just take these and just sew a quarter inch seam. OK, a quarter inch seam away from the line. I picked the two blocks today that I did because I thought they would be simple, even if you haven't quilted recently, or maybe never quilted, then these are easy to do, right? The apron was easy, and this one is really easy, too. And I can't wait to get started, um, like on this whole bag of scraps that I have, and um, make um, a larger pork and beans quilt. And then down the other side, when I got married, my Aunt Anne, came to the house proudly carrying this big bowl full of, of beans.
for baked beans, pork and beans. And she walked in and put them on the table and she said, I brought you the music for your wedding. <laughs> My aunt was a little embarrassed and I'll never forget, you know, how she's, oh, <laughs> Musical food. That's my, um, that is my um, cousin. Okay, so now this is the really important part. Let's see. It says by number four, make sure your angles are turned just like this. So the stitching is going to the right. You see that picture under four? Okay, and it says take and cut them the opposite way. I'm actually cutting them into fourths. So I, I will have the line there all the time. Cut one direction and then take your ruler and then just go on the line and cut again. Okay? Okay. All right. And now it says take and turn to, I'm up at, on page five, or number five. Do you see how it turns? Two over that are opposite, okay? Two over that are opposite here, and I still have two backgrounds. And I'm going to the next one, and I'm turning two over that are opposite, okay? So, we're going to pick up the two from each stack that are pressed. The background is on top. You set the seam with the background on the top, and then open and press toward the background. Okay, that's one. You always set the seam with the direction that you want it to go, okay? And so look, if you take, those two will go back together. Ah, these go toward the backgrounds. Very important. Set the seam open toward the background. Okay, and then let's literally just go ahead and turn the other one. Okay? Let's make sure that's right. It's right! Eleanor, on yes. number four, it says cut apart on the marked diagonal line, but, but you said you're not doing that, are you? Number she three, yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, you're cutting it both ways. Yeah, you cut it into four pieces. Thank you for reading. Okay, so that's one set toward the background, right? And what do we have left on the table? The dark is on the top. Ah, take the dark. Put it on your pressing mat. Open and press toward the dark. Okay? So that's why you have the dark. You set the seam and then you open and you press toward the dark. What's this one? Ooh. Ooh. Is that cute? Mm -hmm. Look at your pictures. Are they all right? And it's kind of like complicated, huh? But, but not really, okay? And so then if we take this one and we turn it, there, like that. Is that right? Yeah? Okay, so now my table is a mess. I'm going to need to have an assistant up here. Now I'm going to just flip this right sides together, flip this right sides together, like so, and... Now I'm just going to take these, flip these right sides together, and these right sides together. And what's interesting, what's happened, is <coughs> now your seam is going up on every single one. Okay? We're nearly there. We're nearly there. Don't go to sleep after the beans. So you know how we were when we were kids. How did it go? Beans, beans, the musical fruit. The more you eat, the more you chew. The more you eat, the more you feel. So let's have beans for every meal. You didn't know that was a Is there a second verse? No. Yes, there is. Beans, beans are good for your heart. The more you eat, the more you <laughs> Thank you, Mary Ann. <laughs> I didn't say it. I'm just that was the sixth verse. <laughs> we were liberated then. Yes, we were. Although.
that's funny. Well, I don't know. I guess my did you did you raise boys? <laughs> There's an eighties version. Um, you know, Boston, I put my paper aside, but Boston is so well known for um, baked beans, Boston baked beans. And did you know that there was, uh, I think in 1919, there was a big explosion of uh, a freighter in the harbor that exploded and molasses started rolling through the town? It was bad. It actually killed people. I have to. I had all my. But they claim that you can still smell molasses in that part of Boston. Yeah, it was like. Do you remember what uh, molasses were used for? Let's see if how many of you know your history. Rum, rum. It was used for rum. Yeah, it was used for rum. Okay. So, um, actually, it was quite serious. Okay, this is the, this is the cool part. I want to make sure my iron is hot for this one. Al, I live next door to two people that were 95 years old. They've been married almost 50 years. Uh -huh. And he put black strep molasses on everything, including his apple pie. <laughs> oh, I think that's why he lived to be so oh, rich in iron. Yeah. Iron. Iron. I think molasses is really good for you, but you guys just all helped your heart. Okay, watch this. <laughs> if you've never done the magical swirling, this is what you have to know. I push the top seam up. Remember I said that? And over on the other side, the seam goes down. And that makes them lock together and really match good. Ooh. It looked like my finger was in front of it, but I don't want my finger in front of that. That's really good, huh? Perfect. Okay, so you go right to these three stitches, and you just pick them out. And I use my stiletto. You can use your seam ripper. You turn them over on the other side, and you just pick them out, okay? And then go through, pick them all out. This is what makes us really lock together because we're going to swirl the seams. And um, even in a whole quilt, these little blocks will lock. Now tell me, have any of you ever made a whole little quilt of bow tie blocks that lock together? Never. They never lock together. They never lock together. They never lock together. Okay, so. This is what you have to do. You always have a problem with it. Okay, one more. Okay, let me see. I did them all. Okay, so now you put them on your pressing mat, wrong side up, and you just push the top to the right and the bottom to the left. And that opens up the very center. And you have this real cute little four patch right in the middle. Right in the middle. Okay, so so this is how, you, okay, on the mat, okay, if you push the top to the right, bottom to the left, that opens up the center, and you got this cute four patch. And then when you look at it on the right side, you go, ooh, ooh, to the right, to the left. And so, if you always make sure that you do half to light and half to dark on these little patches, they'll always lock together. Okay, we got a product to sell you, just in case you don't have it. Get ready. What is it? The Fussy Cut Ruler. Oh my gosh, I got stuck stuck in Julian without a fussy cut ruler. I used my big ruler. Get a fussy cut ruler. Yeah. 
Okay, this is the three and a half inch, and um, you need to have the six and a half inch for the 12 inch block. So there's an X on the ruler, it looks like this. Put it on a small cutting mat, put the X, see? Put your little X right on there. Get that all lined up, and there is Invisigrip on the back. Okay, and then you just trim and turn it around. Oh, my rotating mat, I do need that. That would be really good. But see, when you use your fussy cut ruler and you get all this stuff gone, see how the seams go right out to the corners? Is that good? Yeah. It's perfect! Yay! It's wonderful, it's wonderful. And do make sure that you press these um, from the right side too. I started to do mine. There's, I started to do mine and I said, oh, I screwed up, but I hadn't pressed everything open. So, how are you doing with the directions? Good. Are they good? I got one little error. Oh, it was a typo? Typo on page 15. Ooh, I have to go back and, and find that again. Okay. So we're going to put like one up and one across. Let's see, let's turn to page, let us see. Moderate oven, not moderate oven. Moderate oven. Oh, moderate oven. Uh-oh, I better watch that. Wait, you really cook them in an oven? You can. Then you don't have to stir them and worry about the bottom. You, you can cook them in an oven or you can cook them in this uh, crock pot. Either way. That's always a good line for people that say they don't drink alcohol. But I don't think the Methodist ladies would have liked to have known this. <laughs> oh, well, you you it. I don't know. I attended a Methodist church. Five is okay. There. Is that cute? Oh. And so. They all swirl in the back. When you take and you flip them right sides together, this seam is going down. On the other side, the seam is going up. And it's like that on every one of them. Even whenever you make little blocks, you can set them together into a little quilt. These all swirl exactly the same. And if you just turn them, you can always make it right. It's perfect. It's just a lot of fun. Is that because we did half of them press towards the light? Right. Mm -hmm. Trust me. They would all be the same and they right. Work. They do, they don't work if you push them all the same. Which is what I did first. I mean, this is like like you know, you think it's so simple. Oh well, I spent about four hours trying to figure it out. <laughs> And then I go, okay. And then once you figure it out, it's really easy, and I can't wait to make a little colorful quilt. So I always chain stitch. I always go down from top to bottom. So the newbies, are you learning some new techniques? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, good. And you're saying, oh, my, I need to get some of these things. I'll have to shop. <laughs> I'll have to shop. Okay, so when you open them up, then this is what you have to look for. See how it, it ends a quarter inch in? That's what's going to make a really perky looking seam there next. So you flip it right sides together and you always push the top seam up and the underneath seam down. The top seam up and the underneath seam down. And you actually see where you need to cross with your stitches. And you don't need to use red thread. You can use matching thread. Just, just um, actually, I think it helps if it's slightly off because it's a lot easier to see. 
easier to see you with, my dear. I have to do that little thing with my grandchildren. We have to do the big bad wolf and huff and puff. Okay. Oh, we have sail fabric. No, comes. It's nursery rhyme fabric. Oh, cool. Joan is taking a picture. Were you thinking of putting that on the internet? It's already on YouTube. It's already on YouTube. <laughs> Are they already talking about me? <laughs> okay, I wasn't quite wide enough, and I can't show you until I go back over it. <coughs> I have to cough <coughs> in my sleep. Okay, one more time. All right, you ready? Come on. Ooh. Perfect. Isn't that cute? <coughs> Just adorable. So, what are we going to cook next time? It's going to be fun. <coughs> I'm keeping that surf and turf. <laughs> You'll all get a little one inside your, um, inside your little uh, piece of cardboard paper. Okay, so actually, you know that if you cut these these threads right here, you can also swirl them around in the center. I can't find my scissors, but look, look, see this one? That also swirls. It's so cute. It's just so cute and everything's perfect. It would be as cute on the back side as on the front side, huh? Yeah. It would be so cute. Okay, so now we have, we have to make plans. So for those of you that are new, and all of you that came back, you have homework. You, oh, you're supposed to make a block like I just showed you, one of each. You can do a 12 inch or a six inch or both if you want. <coughs> you would do all 12 inch in one quilt or an all six inch in a quilt. Don't, you're not gonna mix them up together. But do one block, bring it back and show it next month and then I'll show you either one or two new blocks, but I'll try to keep them easy in the beginning and work through to get more advanced blocks. How's that? Good? Is that fun? Cool.